Welcome to Terrific Terry Tuesday at uh, what looks to be or shaping up to be a potentially wild card today at Parks because lots of races. We got one extra one at bonus day, 11th race. Yeah. Lots of horses. You can see a lot of 10s and 12s on the cards. So uh, yesterday we had a couple bombs hit. And, you know, I actually I'd love to go back and review like the races afterwards and look at my race notes and look at the markings I put on the past performances. And, you know, I, maybe I discovered something in that mix. Uh, as you'll see, I put a lot of Ys on there. And that just horses that can get to par for this level. And maybe those races that have a lot of Ys are those races where you might think about uh, all bets or something. Gary. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, as always, we have our free picks of the day at Guaranteed Tip Sheet. Uh, let's bring them up here in just a moment so that we can uh, tell you what's cooking and where. I think the free track today is Will Rogers. Uh, wrong track. You can see yesterday we had a bunch of winners. We keep track of everything over there. But the free track today, if you hit the link in the description down below, you'll find out that it is indeed Will Rogers. Just go ahead and click on that, and you'll uh, be sent to some free picks later on in the day. Should be a uh, fun track, and I know some prices hit there too, Terry. Yeah, looks looks like it. Kaisi oh. joining us again with all of his picks. So screenshot that, folks, as we work our way through, like I said, this pretty wild Parks card. Should be pretty interesting, Terry. I think all day long, good chance to make some big prices. Hopefully we find a few of them starting off perhaps in the first race. Yeah, that's right. So let's get going, I guess, huh? Uh-huh. All right, so it's a mile and 70 yards. And it's a $7,500 claiming race with a purse of $21,000. It's for four-year-olds and upwards, which have never won three races. And at a mile and a 70 yards, we saw a bunch of them yesterday. I think we'll see a couple of them today. A good mixture of distances today. Early speed is the dominant way to the winter circle. Nearly half of the horses get their wire to wire, despite going two turns. There's a little bit of a rail discount for smarten up. Two and three get a bonus. Four and seven get discounted as well. The best place to be is on the outside. 10,000 simulations, Terry. Let me move this over here so I can keep things in order. Where we take a look at early speed to see who has the best chance to get to the lead. And then based upon that early speed, which horses are likely to be in their comfort zone or find a pace similar to one of their best races. We also want to look for some value. Which horses with our 10,000 simulations provide the most odds based upon our fair value odds, and then what percent chance the horse has to run a speed figure of uh, par or at par for this level? That means an 80, Terry. All right, who's going to get the lead? Well, you know, several of these horses show speed, but eight has the most speed, uh, although that three also and the 11 might have something to do with it. Uh, the eight has an overlay of like seven to five to six to one, and the ten has an overlay from about two to one to nine to two. Eight, ten, and two have the best uh, par numbers, and then uh, all but uh, five and seven show some kind of a C zone number. What do you mean blocked by whom? We wouldn't block you. Huh? You know, I, I'm not uh, one of them evil doers in the tech oligarchy. I'm I'm not afraid to uh, contrary opinions. Uh, my feeling is those people who don't like contrary opinions aren't sure of their own. So if they're not sure of their own, they're unwilling to entertain others. Right, Terry? That's right. Yeah, I mean, if you're pretty confident in what you're doing, it doesn't really matter what other people say, right? It's the way it goes. Don Johnson joining us today, uh, our Miami Vice star. Thank you. You know, we have to have some celebrities watching the show, Terry. It can't just be you. Yeah. Uh, we are, and along with uh, all of our simulations, we do trip handicapping. We do have one horse in here. The eight horse, Chip's friend, being one that is a Sesame Street horse. One of these is unlike the others. Otherwise, the rest of the field, three that want to be up front, three that want to be in the middle, three that want to close, perfectly balanced, except for that thorn in the elephant's foot. Uh, Chip's friend right there. Let's see if it is going to be part of the early speed. No, that'll be the 11 horse, Affy's kid. Got a lot of horses, though, on its inside to clear, so it'll have to hustle to get there. If it goes too fast, its late pace says it could fade off. Tequila made me do it. Indeed, we talked about that quitting drinking game. Tequila part of it last time I drank. <laughs> Does have the most late speed in there, but could be considerably off the pace. You know, and a lot of horses, Terry, I don't know about you, but I don't like horses way in the back of the pack with a lot of horses to, to, to pass. 
No, I agree. I, I don't either. They have a hard time. They can get in all kinds of trouble and, you know, get blocked and have to go inside or outside and lose legs doing that, momentum, the whole thing. So, mm -hmm. so they got to get a good trip. So total pace, again, our statistics tell us that there is a 70-plus percent chance that the winner will come from the 10, 6, 3, or 8. Of those are your top four total pace horses. Terry, I think you're going to start with the bottom one on that list. That's right. Number eight, Chip's friend. He finished third versus similar in his last race and has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. And then number nine, Tequila made me do it. He won his last race at Parks Racing, has a high percentage winning jockey and trainer. Salute to America. The three is my third choice. Comes in from Aqueduct to try Parks Racing. Drops in class. His early uh, speed running style helps his chances. And uh, he has a trainer who wins 33% of the races when he when a horse he trains has been away for 46 to 90 days. The four running joke is my long shot. He has a high percentage winning trainer. And uh, the only bets I have here is our normal bets, which is uh, $2 a win on the top choice, a $1 exact a box with the top two choices, a 50 cent a trifecta box with the top three choices, and a 10 cent superfecta box with the top four choices. Looks like we have some agreement in our picks here, Terry. Well, we got what, three of them that are the same, the 10 horse being the oddball in there. I, I had a different horse in here, but Esor scratched out right before we came on. That one did make my picks. But I'm going to go with the three horse in here as my top selection. Salute to America. This one is a class and track dropper with a bunch of good workouts getting prepped. He had a really couple of really sharp ones back there. And then after those sharp workouts, really kind of just keeping the razor sharp after that. Lights are blinking in my house. If the power is going to go out, who knows? Uh, <laughs> uh, my second pick is the four horse running joke. Some people suggest that's what we should rename our show, Terry. <laughs> but this one, uh, last time out, did hold its speed deeper into the race with better fractions. And that was at a mile and an eighth than the fractions that ran in the prior start at one mile. You run better fractions, you run longer. That's like Wrigley Spearmint gum. It's doubly fast. Number 10, Roman Empire. This one is a major class dropper in here, Terry. Been off since December, uh, but absolutely has the most back class if he can find it in his return to work. And then finally, Chip's friend, your top selection. That's a green go horse there, Terry. I know they let us down yesterday. Sorry about that, Racing Masters. But does also have the top par plus and the simulation. And is another one that held its speed longer despite going deeper on the track. Again, as Terry mentioned, no bets for us because we only have like seven bucks today to work with, right? Yeah, that's true. Quick thank you to James Schuler and you think you Breta Thammy. I hope I got that right. My vision is absolutely horrible. Um, thumbs up on Facebook. If you like what you see, comments in the inter comments in the comment section are greatly appreciated and encouraged. Thumbs up are encouraged because it helps us with the algorithm. And then hitting the share button, retweeting if you're watching on Twitter, any sort of reaction helps us with their algorithms. And it's a great, easy way, and just one click away to help the show grow. We appreciate that. So to watch the show, to watch the um, live stream for Parks, you're going to have to probably open an account with TVG, Twin Spires, William Hill, Bed Us, any of the uh, websites that do allow for you to watch the racing online. Uh, or allow you to bet on them. Many times you don't have to bet. Just open the account and the racing uh, visuals are free. I mean, yeah, of course, Race Masters, we would never delete anybody, no matter what they say, unless they were really like off the chains, cra saying crazy stuff that you just can't tolerate in 2024 or probably should have ever tolerated. Race number two, my friend, what are we going to do there? All right, in race number two, we're going to go uh, seven furlongs, and it's a claiming race, $7,500 claiming price, $20,000 purse. For fillies and mares, four-year-olds and upward, which have not won a race since December 26th. And again, you see the speed number that is par for this level, 79. So when we talk about par plus, keep that number in mind. At seven furlongs, Mr. Terry, you're looking for stalkers. This is probably the worst distance for horses that want to be on the front because only 13% go wire to wire, which is probably the lowest number at parks. The rail is fair, so cap captivating Kara, going to get a clean trip. Two and three, get a little bit of a bonus. If you go from four and out, those rates are discounted from the inside out. So the closer you are to the rail, 
The better off you are, Terry. Speed going wire to wire it doesn't happen frequently, but if it does, it looks like one might do it. That's right. That nine has lots of speed compared to all the rest. So should get there to that quarter pole first at least. And then the five has an overlay from about six and a half to one to 12 to one. And the nine has an overlay from three and a half to one to six to one. The six and the nine are uh, the only two that show par plus numbers. And then all of them show some kind of a C zone number. Almost a green go here with the yeah. Diva. Let's see if that can uh, bring to life what the green goes didn't do yesterday, Terry. Uh, <laughs> our pace is shape for race number two. Uh, a majority of the field, they prefer to be from the middle and work their way forward as the race moves on. The one, five, and six, a little bit of Christmas, color, Christmas colors there. They want to be on the front. The uh, nine, though, the PC type is the speed of the speed in here, Terry. So maybe a little left arrow action. Late speed belongs to 12. Sense a million. We know what that person does that named that horse on their spare time. Yeah. Um, Boca Royalty is another one with a little bit of late pace coming from off the uh, pace as well. Our top total pace horses in here are Fairy Dreams, a fleet diva, about four points clear of the rest of the crew. So one of those two probably with the best chance to win. Did you select any of them? Yeah, well, I like Fairy Dreams of six. She's finished the money in five races out of the last six starts. When one of those starts has a high percentage winning trainer, wins 21% of the races in the first race after he claims a horse. And then the seven, Miss Mavala. Malevolence. Mm. Yeah, Malevolent. Malevolent. Mm. <laughs> My tongue gets tired. She won her last race at Parks Racing, and she has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. Cream Caramel, the A, is my third choice. She likes Parks Racing. She's been in the money 47% of the races that she's done here, and she's won 24% of those starts. And the distance won't cause her any problems as she's been in the money 62% of the time and won 38% of those races. And then number nine, Fleet Adiva. Diva is my long shot. She has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. And so for Don Johnson and everybody else that wants it, here's my pick four starting the second race. I'm going to use the six, seven, eight, nine with the one, five, seven with the three, four, five and finish up with a five, six. That's a $36 cost. Ugh, I didn't, I mean, I was going through these pick fours for Don today and I'm thinking to myself, if I were at the track, there's no way I'd be betting pick fours today because it's <laughs> deep fields. Odds, look at these. I mean, really no standout horses, maybe one later on, but even that one has a hole in the size of, uh, I don't know, Jupiter. Yeah. But looking at this race for me, Terry, I'm going to go with the nine horse as my top selection, a Fleet Diva. First up, the horse showed a lot of speed and then faded. That's a pretty good angle for the second start after a layoff. So I think you're going to see more stamina today. Number seven, Miss Malevolence, the tongue tying horse. It's much better with all of its race internals last time out. And then it ran the top last race speed figure, the minimum three-point clear rate that we're looking for over the next closest one. The problem for me with this one is the distance. It's run it eight times and only has a third. Fairy Dreams making the classic third start after a layoff, the first handicapping angle anybody learns. And it's going to drop to the lowest level in its last 10 races. With some Stephen Covey saw sharpening workouts between races. And then finally, number 12, the uh, the weed stock, Sense a Million in there. This also a class dropper, Mr. Terry. And this one, unlike the seven, is running at the proper distance, seven times out. Four wins, a second and a third. You put this horse in any other distance in 64 other races, Terry, just won six of them. So basically seven furlongs, the oddball distance for sense a million. It all makes sense if you think about it. That's true. <laughs> all right, so let's see what we got going here. We have Victor. Hey, how are you doing today, Victor? Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Claudio, um, he's got some numbers for us in here in Spanish as well. It looks like race one, the eight, race two, the six, race three, the eight. He apparently doesn't like race four, race five to six, race seven to five, race eight, the one, nine, and ten, race ten to three, the race eleven to eleven, and then I guess that's it from there. And he's saying uh, it's all free, grato, right? And <laughs> I love that, Claudio. You got the sheet of integrity, just one pick per race for the most part. Yeah, gotta love that confidence, right? I, I don't care how many horses are running, this one is winning. 
Yeah. <laughs> Race number three, Terry, let's talk about the conditions and what they're going to run for and see what they will win. All right. In race number three is seven furlongs again. That's a maiden claiming race, $10,000 claiming price, purse 19000 for maidens, fillies, three-year-old. Mm -hmm. Again, the par speed figure being 70, 64. Yeah, pretty low. That's not the highest of quality races in there, Terry. We talked about seven furlongs being one where the inside three having tactical speed is important. A little bit of a inside to outside bias. And again, early speed doesn't necessarily win the races, Terry, 13% of the time. But again, we see a couple of them that have a little bit more early speed than the rest. Yep, that's true. It shows like the four and the five should go ahead and head to the uh, to the uh, quarter pole. But most of them show some kind of speed. The five has an overlay from two to one to four to one. The five has also got the only par number. And one, five, and four have the decent C zones. And I think the park's first race is going off. It's going off already? Yeah. I, I show zero minutes still. So let's see. Okay, so let's go back to race number one. And we'll come back to race number three. So it looks like they're all loaded in there, Terry. At the moment, who's the favorite? The 10 horse is the favorite at, five, at two to one. They're off and they're running, Terry. And right now you got a line of horses that are trying to get to the lead as they get to that first turn. That 11 horse, Appy Kid, really had to work to get to the front because he had to clear a lot. He didn't really clear yet. So that might have taken a little bit of work out of that one. The three horse sitting down there on the rail in a good position to its outside is the four horse running joke. And on the outside of that is Chip's friend. A little bit of a gap back to that favorite Roman Empire, the 10. And then a little bit of a drop back off to a whole bunch of other horses back there. Kind of hard to see who they are. They ran through the opening quarter in 23 and three. That's a little bit on the quick side. Perhaps Terry, we'll see if that indeed can hold out for the 11 horse. The three and the four are trying to make progress upon the 11. They are narrowly closing that gap. Then you have the eight and the 10 back there. They slowed down a little bit, 48 and two in the second half. The four horse now trying to pull up alongside as the three horse starts to retreat. Mr. Terry, it looks like the four horse is the one that's going to move up to the win, perhaps. They've got the eight horse giving chase right now, but it's a long way off, Terry. So looks right now like the full horse is going to be an easy winner, folks. In the opener, the 11 horse, after setting the tone early on, is indeed jumbling along, trying to keep pace. The jockey's trying to get it to switch leads, not really having a whole lot of success with that, Mr. Terry. They're coming down the stretch here. It looks pretty much like the four horse is going to walk away with this one. Everybody else is kind of flattening out of it. So you're going to go four, you're going to go 11, you're going to go eight and five. Four, 11, eight, and five. Unless somebody comes out of nowhere. There you go. Four, 11, eight, and five. Crazy, crazy opening. And I figured this whole day is going to be like that, Terry. But in a sense, the four horse in our simulations did make a little bit of sense. Good C zone. Chance to be on the lead in one of the four horses with a par plus number. Yeah, it did. It made a lot of sense. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the rest of those guys. Let's see where that four ranked out over here, too, in race number one. Okay, he was down here a little bit, so... Again, I think you're going to see a lot of this today, folks, at parks where just a bunch of different horses have an opportunity to win. Terry, let's go back to race number three and talk about, uh, again, seven furlongs uh, being tactical speed being the case. Take us through the um, – the we went through this part already, right? Yeah, we've already went through this, so now you can go to yours. And... All right. Look at that, Terry, over here, Molly Malone. This is something everybody's looking for, a lone E. All the other horses trying to find their first win, a lot of them anyway, the majority of them haven't been within five lengths of the winner at the finish line. The one and seven looking like they want to close. The five can get up towards that front, folks. Could make easy work of this race. He'll be out there with the four again. So who knows? Maybe the four gets to, up to the front again today. Molly Malone will be right there too, along with Picardi. Our late speed character is the six, Win Bori. That one has a pretty aggressive late pace over everybody, too. So if that one can find any energy at the beginning of the race, could be difficult to contend with down the end. Look at that. That's about, what, 12 points, so two and a half lengths. Your yeah. top total pace horse are the five and the seven with that big closer in the back there, Terry. Oof. Speed, closing, 
What did you decide on? Well, I liked uh, the number uh, one, Moon at Night. She finished fifth in her last race as a favorite, but she has a high percentage when Trainer wins 35% of the races when Brinkman a beaten favorite back to race again. And, and she has a high percentage winning jockey. Molly Malone, the five, drops in class today, has the highest last speed rating and can improve while returning to a sprint. She my second choice. Third choice is Luck, Lovely Charm, the seven, drops in class today, has a high percentage winning trainer who wins 25% of the main claiming races he has an entry in. And then three, Cheerhouse Trout, is my uh, long shot. She has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey and uh, no bets in here other than the normal ones. I'm going to go with the five. That is the absolute green go horse right there. You got green, 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 green. And, you know, yesterday all the green go fives really <laughs> screwed me up in my bets. But, hey, today it's another day. Molly Malone does have a pair of seconds when it ran at this level. Cut back and distance is going to help today. Number one, Moon at Midnight. Better early pace through the first half mile last time out in the first race after a layoff. And potential to improve in the second startup. Number seven, Lovely Charm is a class dropper in here. Terry does have an opportunity to improve off its debut. The second race you got to toss out because the horse threw its rider. Didn't want to work that day. Let's see if it does today. And then finally, that six horse win Bory with that huge late speed advantage. Terry just needs to get a little bit of a quicker start. And, you know, against this crew, probably won't need to be that much quicker than usual to maximize its late leg ability. Race four is on. It's an 11 race card, Terry. So anyway, race four feels like a halfway mark today. It feels like we're just starting. That's right. It sure does. <laughs> It's a mile and 16th. It's a claiming race, $5,000 claiming price, purse 18000 for four-year-olds and upward, which have not won two races since September 26th. I imagine that's 2022. Mm -hmm, probably indeed. So, Melvin, how are you, my friend? Boom. Starting off with the boom from Melvin. Yeah, that was a nice win with the four. The whole day is going to be like that, I feel like. Uh, as far as your mile and a 16th, the conditions here, Terry, you're looking for – Par of 84, that means is why. It means that horse can get there. At least when I'm doing my handicapping. At a mile and the 16th, they don't run a whole bunch of them, Terry. They've run 13, 14 races so far. Early speed has been the preferred running style with 38%, taking them from gate to wire. Pretty small inside to outside bias. So you want some speed. You want to be close to the rail. A couple of scratches in here, Terry, shortening up this race so it should accentuate the speed that's left, and all of them have some chance to be on the gas and get going. Yeah, most of them have sh uh, show some speed here, but the four and the five have the most speed. Uh, actually, it's the th three and the five have the most speed. And uh, the five also shows an overlay of two and a half, one to four to one. The five has the uh, par number, and so does the three. And then uh, uh, hit. Uh, the uh, all but the one has uh, some kind of a C zone, so yeah, it could be comfortable pace for him again. The five, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with these fives with all the green in there again, but you know, if for first you don't succeed, try the five again in the race four. We do find again the five horse wants to be up on the front, perhaps all by itself, and he's a, doesn't necessarily mean it's lead dependent because it's an EP type, so it can pilot or co pilot be just as comfortable. The three horse is another one with versatility as a PC type. That could be middle, back, forward. They're the most versatile horses in horse racing. Those two should be up on the front there, Terry. They got a huge advantage along with the six over the one and the four. So let's see if the one and four can reverse that on the late speed. They do indeed, although the three horse right in that mix too. Our top total pace horses, Terry, this looks like it's essentially a two-horse race between the three and the five. Take your pick between those two. We flipped a coin. Yours landed on three. Mine landed on five. Yeah, well, I like Coco Shell. He came 
comes in from Laurel uh, Park and he came in from Laurel Park and ran a second versus similar the last race at Parks Racing. Has a highest speed figure at today's distance and a high percentage winning trainer. That five that's your top choice uh, is my second choice, Screen Saver. Finished third versus similar in his last race. His best dirt speed is fastest among today's starters. He has a high percentage winning trainer in Jockey Hornbeam. The four likes Parks Racing. He's been in the money 57% of the races. Winning 14% of those starts and the distances to his liking as well. He's uh, been in the money 50% of the time and won 15% of the starts. And then uh, number six, Singing Through the Storm, is my long shot won a race before his last race at Parks Racing. Another Don Johnson pick four. We're going to use the three, four, five, six with the three, four, five, six, nine with the one, three, five, seven. And then I'm going to single the two. $40 cost. I, uh, Terry, I'm going to start with the five horse in here. It's probably a two horse race. You should probably just start our pick fours with just two horses, but the screen saver, as I said, the, the coin landed on that for me instead of the three. This one's the most consistent performer in the field. No question about that. Did run much faster fractions last out. That's uh, a note that shows up in my recap at the end of the night. When I go through and copy my paste notes into Excel and see over and over again some patterns, and one of which is faster fractions in the last race. Coco Shell, this one might have the most upside in the race, Terry. As you mentioned, this one is coming in from another track. Last time out, the horse was better across the board with all of its race internals. Second start after a layoff should see some continued improvement. This one at the distance, eight times out, in the money, six of those eight with three wins. Hornbeam, the four, drops to the lowest level of its uh, last rate, 10 races. Trainer Monte Gelrod does not claim that many. In fact, only seven so far in 2024, but three of those horses won. So when he uh, when he sees something, he's usually right. Singing uh, Through the Storm doesn't get the call for me, Terry. The one horse does. Secret Path for the fourth call. This one has hit par for this level. And actually, surprisingly, might offer the most back class at a big price. And, hey, we had Stephen Fielder on, who wins a lot of those handicapping contests, folks. Says in a five-horse field, take the longest shot on the board. That's going to be a toss-up between the one and the six, I think, Terry. And according to the morning line odds, likely to be the one. Yep. Yeah, I know. My green gold horses yesterday, if they did anything but go. They just got popped by those long shots yesterday. <laughs> So we'll see if, uh, again, the five, the green gold fives can get the, and all over the fives again. Race number five, Terry, lots of horses once again. <laughs> In race number five as we kind of make our way to the middle of the card for seven furlongs once again. Yeah, it is seven furlongs. It's claiming race, $7,500 claiming price, purse 21000 for Phillies and mares, four-year-olds and upward, which have never won two races. And here's your par speed number, 71. Uh, seven furlongs again, tactical speed, inside out bias. So if you want a fast horse, you better be on the inside, Terry. But this race looks like it's filled with many that can find the gas when the gates open. Yeah, the the 12, well, there's, you know, there's plenty of these horses that uh, show some kind of speed. The 12, 8, 4, and 2 show uh, the best speed out of all of them. Then that 5 uh, is like was that six to five? For yeah, between versus, six to five and seven to five. Yeah. Yeah, versus seven to two, and that twelve is seven to one to twelve to one. The overlay there. The five and the four are the only two that have a par plus number, and then all but the three show some kind of a C zone number. Yeah, a lot of horses should be comfortable in here. Five horse almost a green go on that. I don't know what's going on. I have to go <laughs> to go see if there's like something with these five horses. This horse race right here, Terry. All these horses want to close. These three want to be in the front. That should give them a little bit of an advantage if they can get up in there, Terry, and, and show some, you know, modest fractions, not run too crazy. Holly Berries, Fine Whining, Lucky Breeze, but they're all kind of bunched up in here, Terry. But these two definitely have the quick, well, these three, the quickest early steps of those. Looks like the 12 has the most late speed. Map of Life will be coming along and really not all that far off the pace, along with a little late luck. Might need a little bit of that luck at the end, considering where it'll be early on in a deep field. Again, not a fan of horses that have to weave their way through traffic to find the finish line. Map of Life, the five horse, the closer, does have a 
total pace advantage over the 12 and 11. But again, yeah, all the way down to here, pretty tight. So get blocked, get wide. Could be the difference between finishing first and way out of the money, Terry. Again, another wide open race, and somehow we settled on three out of the same four horses. Yeah, well, I like the six fine whining. She finished uh, third versus similar in her last race, and she has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. Map of Life, the five is my second choice, has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. Little Nutter, uh, the four horse is my third choice. She drops in class today and has a high percentage winning trainer. Only Girl, the nine, is my uh, long shot, has finished in the money in five races out of the last seven starts and won one of those starts. No bets in here for me. So Mahoning Valley about to kick off race number one. And our friend down here, Race Masters, says, best bet of the day, race number one, 20 to win on the one horse, Perfecto. And right now, Perfecto, as I look at the odds, because they're about to get running over there, it's two to one. Should we watch that race and see what happens, Mr. Terry? Yeah. Now, it's kind of sloppy over there, and it looks like they're a, they're a bit away from doing that. So let me go through my selections, and then we'll okay. see if, indeed, race number one gets started over at Mahoning Valley. I have the uh, six horse. Fine whining <laughs> as my top choice. Another one of those horses that all of the race internals improved last time out, just missed, and that was at this level. And maybe catching a little extra distance today could be the difference maker. The five horse map of life ran a Z pattern in its last race. You're new, Z pattern uh, for race number five. You'll see here you got a 82 as the opening pace number. And then it dips down to 70, and then it comes back to life for a second wind in the stretch. So Z pattern. Uh, it also has the top total pace by four points, and it is our simulation favorite. Number two, Holly Berries. Who doesn't like Holly Berries? This one is the likely pace setter in here, Terry. Second start after a layoff with a couple of workouts in the middle to put the horse in more fitness for the stretch drive. And then Little Nutter. The four horse getting the final call for me. This one's a track dropper and a class dropper and only other par plus horse behind the five. Are they getting anywhere near? No, they're still kind of, they're on Florida time apparently in Ohio <laughs> because or Charlestown time, whichever one it is, because they're way behind over there. Melvin Torres, second pick five at parks. He likes a two, eight, four, five, nine, ten. Four, seven, and then three. I think he's stuck in the back there. Uh, and then eight, and then maybe a three on the back end. Tell it me is. About how that works out. I think out. he's singling the three on the back. So three, eight. Okay, I see. So it's the eight with – so looks like he's singling the eight with the four, five, nine, ten, then the four, seven, singling the three – going three, eight, and then the three. All right, I get it now. All right, Terry, race number six. Let's see if I can, again, free track of the day. Will Rogers, there's a link in the description down below. Kindly use that. If you're watching on Twitter right now, kindly hit the retweet button so other folks can find us. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Follow us on all of our social sites. They're supposed to be scrolling down below, but the producer forgot to press that button until right now. You see all of our social sites, Horse Race, the number two streaming down there below. Terry, we're going to go to race number six, which is the absolute middle race on the card today. That's right. It's six and a half furlongs. It's a $25,000 claiming race. Purse, $32,000 for four-year-olds and upward, which have not won a race since December 26th. Claiming races for $16,000 or less are not being considered, or which have never won four races. And again, par speed figure being a 90, as we look at our simulations terry at six and a half furlongs what we're looking for is some stalkers middle forward is the best place to be 26 percent of the time they go wire to wire pretty strong rail bias for word on a wing two and three so the three and the four in this case that plays fair if you go four and out the closer you are to the rail the better terry tell us about the early speed here well the four shows the most speed as you can see there but the five and the one show a little bit of speed to on the as far as the data goes, the five uh, has an overlay from about seven to five to six to one. And the seven has an overlay of two to one to four to one, five, seven and one have the C, uh, par plus numbers. And all of them show a C zone number with the seven being the lowest. Yeah. And our 
trip handicapping for the beginning of a one of four pick fours today on the card. And most of the people want to be middle back that four into five. If they can get up there with some juice, they could be difficult to run down at the end, Terry, where a bunch go wire to wire on the come up. The one we thought would be on the lead. Looks like it might indeed be there. Kate's golden dude will be uh, certain to hold that horse to account to make sure it doesn't get away with two easy fractions. On the way home, nay dude, another one that should be close to the pace early on, about a length quicker than everybody else as they're coming down the stretch. That means that one does grade out as the top total pace horse. Those two, four, clear of a quick return. So again, looks like maybe you look at the five and the seven as an exact box or key horses in your wagering. Terry, how about you? I like nay dude, the uh, seven. He ran second versus seven in her last race, has a high percentage winning tr trainer and has a high percentage winning jockey. And then uh, he's the five Kate's golden dude is my second choice, finished in the money in seven races out of the last eight starts, won four of those races, and he has a high percentage winning trainer. So he likes winning. And then the one world on the wing is my third choice, finished fourth in his last race after being bumped at the start. The rail post is winning at a 25% clip, and he has a, a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. Quick return, won his last race at Parks Racing, and it has a high percentage winning jockey. And this is the third uh, pick four of today, one three five seven with the two three four with the one five nine ten with the six seven. That's a forty eight dollar uh, ticket. I, I, I'm going to start with the seven horse two. Terry is my top choice in here. They do at the distance, maybe not the best for winning, but certainly very uh, likely to finish in the money. One win, four seconds, two thirds. So seven out of eight, eighty seven and a half percent. I think the horse improves today after running faster fractions at six and a half furlongs last time out. The prior start was at five and a half. So it went a furlong longer and still ran faster. Catching a little bit of a weight break today could be a difference maker. Word on a wing, the one horse, if that one could just run back two races, Terry, it's going to win, perhaps even win by a lot. Number five, Kate's Golden Dude. This one has some early speed, so should be a part of the giddy up and go when it gets running. Been off since July, does have some very good workouts. One to kind of circle when you're looking through the past performances is that March 4th work. Then finally, the three horse quick return. It was a tough call for me over the four and all that early speed. Quick return is walking up the class ladder much better with the late speed in its last race. Let's see if that momentum can continue. I'm going to go pick four, one, five, seven, two, four, eight, five, ten. Four six seven and mine I think is twenty seven bucks. All right. By the way, in that opening race at Mahoning Valley, I think the five horse finished first. I don't know who finished that after that, but I think the one finished third. Hopefully, the five horse does good at Parks today because once again I'm on that five horse a lot. Race seven as we wind our way through the back half of the car, Terry. I'm eleven races, uh, so let's keep on plowing forward, my man. <laughs> We're going to stretch out to a mile and an eighth. It's a claiming race, $10,000 claiming price, purse $26,000 for four-year-olds and upwards, which have not won a race since December 26th. Claiming races for $8,000 or less were not considered and which have never won four races. Uh, a mile and an eighth, they really don't run a whole lot at this distance. They're so far just a half a dozen, six. And, so, and, and it's been kind of a barbell approach, either go wire to wire or close, like being in the middle. Uh, be either lukewarm or hot, don't be in the middle. That's the way these races have been won. Two out of the six have gone wire to wire. The other four closed. So far, none have made it from the rail. Midnight Cat could find it difficult, but again, only six races. One of the winners came from post two and three. All of the rest came from posts four, five, six, and seven. Terry, so if your speeds, if, if it's going to be one of the wire to wire horses, it looks like one of them stands out for that chance. That's right. That too has the most speed, and uh, he's also got a nice, a little over bit of an overlay. He goes from almost two to one to three to one, and then the four shows an overlay from about eight to five to six to one. The four, two, and one show par number, par plus numbers that are pretty decent, and then all of them show uh, nice C zones. Yeah, indeed, you got another green goal, but this time it's not the five; it's the two. So. <laughs> That tells me that, you know, there's not a glitch in the algorithm.
And two should be where it wants to be. On the lead is a low knee. The one horse has some versatility. Everybody else, middle or back, Terry. So if that two horse gets a lead, a comfortable lead, should grow in confidence. And he's about eight points clear of Sophos, the four horse. That means, Terry, Sevier should get the pace it's looking for. Should be able to get to the lead without a whole lot of extra effort. And that should give a little bit of late leg stability to that horse. At the end, St. Marco will be coming. Sophos, that four horse, a left arrow horse, the one we saw that might give the two a little bit of a challenge early on. That one is going to be there as well at the end, Terry. Your top two total pace horses are the two and the four. A little bit gap down to Olympic Romp, and then they kind of stagger down from there. So two, four, and then build your exact the trifecta tickets after that, Terry. Is that what you did? Well, I did the two as my pick of the day at Parks uh, Sevier. Won two races in a row going for a hat trick. Best dirt speed as fast as Monk today's starters. Has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. Then I went with the three running what running ones. Q or the something? Horse running what? on r- runny on, on SQ. Yeah. He won his last race at Park Racing. Has a high percentage winning jockey. Sophos uh, is the four. He finished third. I'm sorry. Finished in the money in eight out of the last ten races. Winning one of those starts has a high percentage winning trainer. Then the eight is my long shot Olympic romp. He finished third versus Simmer his last race and has a high percentage winning trainer. I'm going to bet $7 to win on number two. I think the two horses, the one to probably beat in here. Another one of my green go horses, just for you, racing master. I think it might be too fast for everybody else at the beginning with that huge advantage early on in the race. Also has a top total pace, five points clear. And then the top last race speed figure, five points clear. Maybe in a day of potential wildness, the lone island in the card as the most probable winner. There's another one coming up, but there's reasons why not to like it. Number four, Sophos is your same favorite. It's also a horse that has the strongest par plus in there. Very consistent performer. And another one of those that we talked about a race ago with the Z pattern. So some early race enthusiasm, catching your breath in the middle, and then second win down the stretch. Olympic Romp, the eight horse, uh, won the last three times that this horse ran anywhere near close to the level it's running at today. And then Midnight Cat, the one horse. This was a horse for the course, 10 races, three wins, three seconds, nothing else. It's run other tracks four times, only managed one second in that mix. And the only reason you wouldn't put this one higher is because so far, the rail is yet to score at the distance. Race number two, Terry, looks like they're waking their way to the um, gates over there. So let's talk about a couple of other things today where you can help the show. We would greatly appreciate it. Horse racing today, there is a link in the description down there below. Kindly head on over to there. You see where it says HRT gear. Pick up some horse racing today t-shirts, hats. Uh, you'll look fantastic at the track. You'll support the show. And uh, we hope that you will uh, we'll see you at the track with some of that information on there for you, Terry. It's held up pretty well for me. I mean, we bought it, what, two, three years ago? Yeah, mine's been doing really well. I like them a lot, so. Mm, as do I. Free picks again today. Will Rogers down in the description below as we try to waste a little bit of time before race number two gets started. Let's talk a little bit about the odds for race number two right now. In a race that looks pretty wide open, your favorite is the nine horse at two to one, a fleet diva from that six to one morning line getting bet down. Next up on the board after that two to one horse is the six, Fairy Dreams. Uh, that one is Harry's top choice at three to one. The seven, one that we both have in second place, Miss Malevolence, the tongue tire, four to one. Uh, next up on the board looks like maybe the 1 or the 12, the 12 at 8 to 1, and then the 1 horse at 9 to 1, everybody else coming in at above 10 to 1 odds. Minus the 9 horse, the 6 and the 7, Terry, looks like it's pretty wide open. As far as value is concerned, who's offering the most value right now? The, te- the 2 horse, Boca Royalty, we have at 8 to 1. It yeah. is. It's long with the 1 horse, too. So it looks like right now the 1 horse is the best and the two horse, yeah. The one and two offering the most value on the race. And Melvin wants to bet a hundred to win on number nine. All right, Melvin coming out aggressive. I love it. 
right? If you're going to do anything, you might as well do it aggressively. The nine is indeed your favorite right now at eight to five. And we have that one as uh, one of the favorites in here, according to our simulation. One of two horses with a chance to run a speed figure above par, at least so far anyway. That would be 79, so not a, a Herculean effort, but still a pretty solid one. Just waiting for somebody to load there. Terry looks like uh, we're waiting on Sense a million. It's a little spaced out, finding his way into the uh, gate. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Maybe the 10 horse, too. Lulinda's heart kind of, yeah, it's the 10 and the 12 that they're trying to corral into the gate so far without any luck. I can't see either in the in the camera shot, so I don't know what's going on with them. Hopefully not a late scratch. Let's see. Let's see if Jessica Paquette will give us a clue. And I don't hear her saying anything either, so I don't know. Is her microphone even open? Come on, Jessica, give us an update. What's going on? Nope. No update, no nothing. Just a picture of them waiting for the 10 horse to load. And Christopher wants the uh, number one win in place. Yeah, that's a good bet. Maybe one, two, exact the box with yeah. 12 to one and a 14 to one. Also, his pick of the day is the seventh race. He likes the number one, $10 to win. That being Midnight Cat. Oh, we, did we do that? Yeah, we did that race already, right? Yeah. That's your pick of the day, too, Terry. It right? is. He always. Who, who won yesterday? No, I didn't, and I don't think he did either. So, do you remember who won, Christopher? I have to write these things down in my notes. Yeah, what the heck no, is he, going I on the track? I looked. He didn't win. I didn't win. So, come on, Jessica, give us an update. What's going on? In that seventh race, Christopher also wants a one five uh, two as an exacta box. So it looks like they're struggling with the 12 horse. It looks like the 10 horse is in the gates right now. So now they're moving up to 12 horse. He's moving. All right, well, finally. I guess that one didn't want to go in since a million. Hmm. Kind of, like I said, spaced out in the back there. They're off and running. And early on, another clean break. The nine horse has powered its way to the lead, a fleet diva, as we suspected it might with that. 80% chance to get the lead. Jockey's looking between his legs already, so he's trying to gauge how fast he's got to go. To the outside, Terry, it looks to me like you have the six horse in there, Fairy Dream, so our two top choices. A whole bunch of horses crowded there. you got the one horse, the six horse in between, the five horse just trailing nicely in that spot. The 12 horse is going to run three wide all the way around the track after not wanting to load. Opening quarter in 23 and 2 is the nine horse. Uh, the hundred dollar bet puts a little bit of a gap between it and the six. It's trying to make its move through the turn, although the six horse is trying to make a move now, rallying through the turn at seven to two. So it looks like right now he's pulled up alongside the nine. They ran the opening half in 46 and four. That's way too fast for that nine horse. I hate to tell you, Melvin. He's going to get run by by the six horse in here. The six horse is going to go on, it looks to me like, and win this race. Now you have the five horse in there powering its way, looking like it's going to maybe get third from second from the nine horse. If it can hang, yeah, a bunch of horses are going to go by this one at the end there. It's going to go six, and then well, maybe the nine hangs in there. Uh, six to nine. Terry with the winner on top, but both of us making it through to the pick four. Um, with the six horse, yeah, looks nice. So sorry, and that one goes off at seven to two. Nice price. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand for the life of me why jockeys do that, though. To be honest with you, yeah. Why that? Who's riding it? The, the uh, nine horse. That oh. is uh, Alicio Ruiz for trainer Michael Pino. I don't see why, if you have the lead, why you have to make your move first and run forty six. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It never made any sense to me, Terry, right? No, it doesn't. So I guess the two I had a hot ten one, please, on the five. Yeah. So we're off to race number eight now, Terry? Yeah, that's right. So race number eight is coming right up. It's uh 
a mile and 70 yards. It's a $7,500 claiming race, purse 20000 for fillies and mares, four-year-olds and upward, which have not won a race since December 26th. Yes, and to win this race usually takes a speed figure somewhere around 79. A mile and 70 yards, the profile of a winner does favor horses, Terry, that uh, have early speed. Again, nearly half of them, 48% of the time, the horse that gets the lead at the quarter-mile marker has the lead at the finish line. A little bit of a rail discount for Prussian Blue. Two and three, get a bonus. Four through seven, a discount. Best place to be is a eight and out. Terry, we said speed is the way to the winner's circle, and you got about three of them that look like they should contend early on. Yeah, especially the four and the five. And then the five also has an overlay of from about uh, oh, three to five to four to one. The five, ten, and nine show the only uh, par plus, especially the five has a nice one. And all but the three and eight show some kind of a season. Mm -hmm. I, I, what did I do here? I, I, You know what? This is the wrong word. I don't know what I did here, Terry. <laughs> These numbers are way off right here. I think I'm in the wrong. I think I put this one in the wrong race. This is supposed to end on this race, not start on this race. So hold on. Back to race number six, Terry. That's my bet of the day right there. Uh, <laughs> just dummy, right? Control V. Okay, so back to race number six, Terry. I'm going to do a pick three. One, five, seven with the two, with the five and the ten, because the five and the ten are my picks here. I guess I could put it where it finishes, because if I get to this point, one of these two winning is going to have to happen. Yeah. Uh, our race set up for race number eight, the four horse, not a trace. Perhaps Ohlone can get to the front, can maybe steal this one. It does have a pretty good early race advantage over the rest of the field, about two lengths. Speed could hold on this day. If not, unadulterated, that five horse has about a one and a half length lead over Prussian Blue. Not going to be all that far off the early lead either, Terry. That one does have the top total uh, pace by 12 points. Folks, you see a 12-point horse, they may not win, but you can expect the horse to run a very good race and maybe one that you want to put some key boxes around. Terry, we're going to do more than that. We're going to start our picks with that one. Yeah, number five is uh, my first choice on adultered. Uh, she finished third versus similar last race as a favorite, but she has a trainer who wins 23% of the time when he brings a beaten favor back again. And has the highest last race speed rating. She has the highest speed figure at today's distance. Her best start speed is fast among the today's starters. So lots of lots of boxes marked. Number one, Prussian Blue is my second choice. Comes in from Penn National after winning three out of the last four races to try parks racing. She likes the distance and has a high percentage winning jockey. Number 10, Good Penny is my third choice. Drops in class today. Her best start speed is fastest among today's starters. And she has a high percentage winning trainer. Number nine, ambitiously placed, likes Parks Racing. She's finished in the money in 69% of the starts, winning 30% of those races. And at this today's distance, she's been in the money at 80% of the races that she's been in, and she's won 20% of the starts. My last pick four is the one, five, seven, 10 with the three, five, six, seven with the three, five with the three, eight, nine. It's a $48 ticket. I have um, Christopher Scary Creation says this looks like a two horse race between the five and the 10, dropping big. If either runs at all, they will destroy this field. Of course, it's parks, and anything could happen. We agree with that. Uh, you might go out in 46 for no reason. Uh, race eight, number one wins in place, the one, four, and five for Christopher D'Souza. If like Scary Creations or Christopher or John Attaway, or Melvin Torres, or Don Johnson, or Umet. You have some thoughts, some questions. Any, you know, you got a winner somewhere else in the world today. Let us know about that. We'd appreciate it. A bad jockey, Elo knocked me down. Hundred. Yeah, it was just a bad ride. I mean, I, I don't understand why you're on the lead, and I don't understand why you have to make your move before anybody else does. You run forty six. You know, you're not going to win. I mean, it. It's. <laughs> It's clear as day. And I'm not even riding a horse. I'm all the way in Chicago, and I can see that happen. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to go with the five horse, two, Terry, as my top choice in here. Unadulterated. It does have that huge par plus. And, you know, see that right there? And a huge total pace, 12 point advantage over everybody else. I would have singled this horse up in this race because of those two advantages. But 
The 10 horse, good penny. It is a track dropper and a class dropper coming in from the Naira circuit. Did show some better early speed and some better late speed last out. Second race after a layoff, three workouts in the middle. That horse is absolutely going to be more fit t- today. The nine horse ambitiously placed a little bit of a longer shot in here. Terry, one that you have in your picks as well. Did show some better early speed and early fractions in its last effort. In the money at this mile and 70 yards, 15 races, 12 times collecting a first, second, or third place check. So in the trifecta quite frequently. Number four, not a trace. Another long shot in there, Terry. Good shot to be up on the lead there. Decent zone. And again, if you get up onto the front, you have a 48% chance to go wire to wire. If this one doesn't go out in 46, Terry, could steal this one up on front. My last pick four, I'm going to go with the 510 with the 3, 4, 6, 7, 4, 5, 7, and 3, 8, 9, and 10 to close the show. Race nine in our 11 race field. Three more to go in what feels like a marathon today, Terry. All right, we're going to go at another mile and 70 yard race. Uh, claiming price 25,000, purse 32,000 for four year olds and upwards, which have not run a, won a race since December 26. Claiming races for 16,000 or less are not considered, or which have never won four races. And at a buck 70, we talked about you want to have some tactical speed. But you better be real fast because almost half of them go wire to wire. Outside of Brother Brad, the inside does pretty well. Eight and out is really the best place to be. So uh, some outside speed in race number nine, Terry, can carry him a long way. And looks like all of the major speed is out there. Yeah, the seven, eight, nine show the most speed, especially that seven. And the three has an overlay from uh, two and a half to one to five to one. The five has an overlay from four to five to five four to one five three seven and one show par numbers and then all but the five show some kind of a c zone number with the four being pretty low yeah this one has a 56 percent chance rondon scores easy to go above par and he didn't make my picks and then, uh, i'm probably going to regret that our race shape for the ninth uh, most everybody wants to be middle forward so this one could be pretty aggressive out of the gates uh, the most aggressive of which might be the king cheek Nostalgic run, two outside horses are going to go after. And we said outside speed can do pretty well. Dreaming of Jerry, that's the one with the most late speed. It's all tied up with Baton. Ron Don Scorsese, that big overlay right in there as well. Brother Brad, that rail, eh, a little bit of a discount. We'll see if he can live up to that. Finally, Dreaming of Jerry, the three horse, scores out three points better than Ron Don Scorsese. The King Cheek right in that mix too. Our top four were 72, 73% of the winners come from Terry. You like the six horse. I do. I like that six horse. He likes Parks Racing. He's finished in the money 83% of the races here at Parks, and he's won 50% of the starts. And the distance won't be a problem as he's finished in the money in 80% of the races, winning 40% of the starts. The seven, the King Cheek, is my second choice. Ran second versus similar in his last race, and his early run uh, running style will help his – Chances so the shorter distance should be a big help, and he has a high percentage winning jockey and trainer. Rondon Sorkis is, is the five, he won two of the last three races and has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. My third choice, my long shot is Dreaming of Jerry. The three he won his last race, has the highest speed figure at today's distance, and his best third speed is fastest among today's starters. I have no bets other than our normal ones because I'm out of money. I think there's a little bit of a tell here, Terry, in this race because Ruben Severa, I think he's he's a little bit on the sideline right now, if I remember recovering from an injury because he's not racing. That's usually Jamie Ness's go-to jockey. In his absence, he's gone to Michael Sanchez as his first call. Let's see, race number three for Amin Ona. He wants a one is 100% going to win in race number three. I, I, I love that confidence. At least we now have seen bumper cars today. Parks yesterday seems like stretches are just bumping the crap out of each other. Nobody ever gets taken down. Yeah, they're all I read. Race nine, the one horse, Brad, brother Brad, with the one, two, three, exact trifecta box for Christopher D'Souza. So I think the tell being Michael Sanchez coming on to the seven horse, the King Cheek, instead of Ron Don Scorsese. That's another Jamie Ness horse. So the first call rider, and Sanchez rode both of them. So maybe I'm reading too much into that, but that's why I feel like that's the better of the two Ness horses today. 
the six horse Schweikels. It's a little bit of a flyer in here, Terry. Those last two races were god awful. Making the third start after a layoff for trainer Guadalupe Percario. Uh, he's done a third start, I think, 60% of the time, uh, 60 times, and 30% of them, so 18, found his way into the winner's circle and three really good workouts since that last race. And if you look at the other most recent three race cycle, the first two races were really nothing to get all that excited about and then popped in the third one, clearly targeting this race. Number four, Baton, another bit of a price in here. Second start after a layoff with a Stephen Covey maintenance work in between. Going to drop in class to a distance where the horse has run four times, has a couple of wins and a couple of seconds. So a buck 70 is the right place for Baton. Finally, the three horse dreaming of Jerry. That's the simulation second favorite choice in there. Terry going to be closing. Did run the top last race speed figure three points clear over everybody else. And honestly, it was a real hard call for me over Ron Don Scorsese, but I went with what I thought was the Jamie Ness hell. All right. So as I say, if you're playing poker and you don't know who the mark is, it's you. So I think Jamie Ness did put the tell out there. Two races to go. Whew, Terry, race 10 ordinarily would be done at this time, but not today. Nope. It's another mile and 70 yarder. It's an optional claiming race of $40,000 claiming price. If you decided to put your horse in there to maybe be claimed. Purse 52000 for fillies and mares, four-year-olds and upwards, which have never won two races other than a maiden, a claimant, a starty, or a state bred, or which have never won three races or a climbing price of 40000 Yeah, we talk a lot about having a lot of speed at this distance, particularly on the inside, you know, two or three, but preferably on the outside. It's the best way to win at a mile and 70 yards, Terry. In race number 10, a lot of them have some speed in here, Terry. In fact, Every one of them has some chance to get on the lead, but it looks like the five horse has the best chance. Yeah, he does. He has the most speed, although most of several of them have speed. Uh, the five also has uh, overlay from about uh, three to five to three uh, to uh, what seven to two. The five and the seven are the only ones that have par plus, and the five has a really nice par plus number. And then all of them show some kind of a uh, C zone. And before we move on to the, the uh, trip handicapping part, if you haven't done so yet, kindly hit the retweet while you're watching us on Twitter so that you can, and then follow us, of course. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I think we're about 100 people short of 5,000. Help us get there by the end of next week. We'd certainly appreciate that. One of the ways you can do that is hit the share button when you're on our YouTube channel and post it in your social sites. Follow us on Horse Race, the number two day um, down below for Twitter, X. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Threads. I think I missed one there. TikTok, all of the above. Our race shape, again, another race, Terry, where everybody wants to be middle forward. This one could get spicy in the very beginning. The spicy of which is if I'm in the right race, Terry. This one, excuse me, wrong race. This one is most middle back. So this one might not be as spicy. That means the five horse, respectfully, with that 101 figure in there, Terry, that stakes level stuff, should have no problem getting to the front as far as the late speed. If anyone's going to run it down, Mia Tosca and perhaps Sweet Wilmel, Wil, Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina, yeah, whatever. Wilhelmina. That one, those two probably have the best chance. And then your top total pace source in here is respectfully, Terry, 14 points clear of the next you know group of horses in here. I mean, this really looks like the five horses race to win, Terry, but I have a stat for you coming up in a minute that might give you some second thoughts. All right. Uh, well, I like the five respectfully. Won her last race and received a 104 speed rating, which is pretty nice, and has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. Uh, and then the three pistol uh, blazing. Uh, finished uh, in the money in her last four starts. She won, won the last one, has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey, and a good workout on March 20th. Immigrants Affair, uh, Immigrants Affair, the seven has won two of the last three races, and he has a high percentage, or she has a high percentage winning job trainer. Then the two gold medal, Anna, she finished third versus in her last race, and she has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. She's my long shot. So, so Bryson, or Byron, excuse me, Glisson says in race number, daily double, race number eight and nine he wants the five in race number eight the seven in race number nine 
Scary Creation said the five horse is overrated. It destroyed a four horse field at a lower level. No way he gets his own way on the front end today. Way too much speed. In fact, most likely Cryptomania will be on the lead. Yeah, Cryptomania does show that has some ability to get to the front. There's another reason why I'm a little bit skeptical. No three in your picks, Rich, in this race. No pistol, Liz Oblazen. Uh, we'll talk about what I like and why I like. And I put the four on top. Sweet Wilmania, Wilmenia, whatever. I, I screwed that one up. And the reason I did that is because the five horse is probably going to get bet down coming off that 104 speed figure, which is just light years ahead of everybody else. It's 19 points, I think, clear of the next closest horse, which is just way off the charts. Um, but in reading Andrew Byer's book on speed figures, one of the things that he pointed out, and 90% of the time it's accurate, and this is uh, just kind of popped into my brain here. Horse that's been off five months. So this one was from July. It was the last time it ran to March. I don't need to have, have a calendar to know that that's more than five months. If they come off and they run a peak number, which this horse did, a 104, 90% of the time that horse regresses. That's a big percentage of regression. Now, the question is, with a 19-point advantage, Will it regress enough to allow the others to come up and catch them? We'll find out. I'm going to put the four horse out there on top because that one loves some parks for sure. Been at their 19 races, won nine of them, has a second and five thirds, and at times has some really aggressive late speed. So it won't be all that far off the pace. And if it can find that stakes level late touch, maybe can run down that five horse. If not, that 19 point speed figure advantage. The regression, all that stuff might not matter. Number seven is my third choice, Emirates Affair. That one in here, only other par plus horse in the race, along with that five horse, uh, Mr. Terry, will be on the front if the five falters at all at a distance where 48% go wire to wire. And at parks in the money, seven out of eight races. So another horse for the course. And it really was a tough decision for me between Mia Tosca the eight horse and the three horse pistol Liz Ablazin. But I'm going to go with the eight horse third start after a layoff. Uh, again, Craig Milkowski from Timeform. They did a lot of study on this and found that horses that improved in the first half mile with their par pace numbers, they tend to do better in the next outing and catching a little bit of a weight break to boost that potential extra fitness. No bets for me, Terry. We're going to make it two. The last race of this day, an 11 race card. And I think if I remember correctly, once they go to 11, they tend to stay there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they do. Uh, I think they're doing that because we've had so many uh, race cards that were canceled for the weather. So they're trying to make up for that. The mm -hmm. seven, uh, the 11th race is a seven furlongs claiming $7,500 claiming price. Purse 20000 and it's for four-year-olds and upward, which have not won a race since December 26. And that seven furlongs, again, this is where speed means the least. Only 13% going wire to wire. But doesn't mean you better not have some early wheels because stalkers, the horses that are right off the pace, tend to do the best. The rail is fair. Two and three get a bonus. Four and out. The closer you are to the rail, the better. The farther out. The worse it is, Terry. So some tactical speed on the inside in the closing race of the day. Taco Bean has a little bit more than tactical speed. Yeah, the three does show a little bit more than that ten, but uh, it should. It might be go head to head. You never know. Uh, the eight shows an overlay of from two to one, four to one, and the nine has a very small overlay from four and a half to one to five to one. The eight, nine, and ten are the only ones that show par plus numbers. All but the two have uh, some kind of a C-zone number. Yep, and for the last time of the day, Terry, we got close to a green go horse down here with the 10, just in spite of it. Our trip handicapping for the final race of the day, race number 11. Ah, look at absolutely perfectly balanced. you got two that want to be on the lead, two that want to close, six in the middle that all have some versatility. So this one looks like it could be a wide open race to close the show. Taco Bean, we said that one will probably be the fastest. It's on the inside with some speed. It's probably going to set the tone early on. A little bit of a gap down there from Rudy Rue. So these four should get after it. Two of them on the outside. They might have to work a little too hard. Be careful backing those. Rudy Rod, eight points clear of Hibachi. So Rudy Rod will definitely be coming aggressively at the end. 
That scores out as the top total pace horse along with just in spite of it. They're six points clear, Terry, of the next closest group. Rui Rod, five points on top. So maybe an ice cold trifecta, eight over the 10. Well, that wouldn't be ice cold with the four, 11, three, Terry. That's the way to play the total pace trifecta. How did you play your picks? Well, I like the eight Rudy Rod. He ran second versus similar in his last race. His best start speed is fastest among to these starters. And he has a high percentage winning trainer. And then I like the nine uh, as my second choice. He finished third versus similar in his last race. Has a high percentage winning trainer. Jockey Taco Bean, the three, won his last race at Parks Racing. And has a good four for long workout on March 21st. Hibachi, the four, is my long shot. Won his last race. At Parks Racing, has a high percentage winning jockey and trainer. That's uh, no money for me left, so I can't make any bets. Before we move on, Donald Mail, thank you. Alington Mello Quicksbara, thank you. Dennis Hellman, thank you. Rebecca Pollard Rhodes, always a fan. Thank you for joining us, as always. Yasmin Wrightman, thank you. Jim Spencer, Claudia Valenzi, James Schuler, and others gave us the thumbs up on. Facebook, thank you. We appreciate that. Thumbs up on YouTube. Again, any interaction, retweet, share our content. Feel free to do it. If you want to, you can even go ahead and clip it, put out the lines of us making fools of ourselves, or when we make sages of ourselves on picks. any publicity, as they say, is good publicity. And perhaps we can get some good publicity, Terry, because on a wide open card, the last race, we agree on the first three, which is kind of unusual today, I think. But Rudy Rod is that top total pace horse, five points clear of the next closest horse. Much faster early fractions in its last race. Sign of a horse improving. Angulus Warrior, the nine, much better at the end of its last race. Does have a maintenance workout between to keep the saw sharp. Taco Bean, that's the one at some point they'll all have to pass. Does have two solid workouts in between to help with more fitness at the end. And I'm going to go with the 10 horse just in spite of it. Been off since November, Terry, but that February 8th workout is a hint that he could be ready. You'll know if this one makes a huge move, which when he does his best coming out of the turn, tends to put some triple-digit mid-pace numbers on the board. If he does that, Terry, that one might be really hard to contend with as they close in on the wire. All right, Terry, that wraps up a long day. You're going to be off tomorrow. I'll hey. back. Solo, I'll be flying solo, Amelia Earhart tomorrow for Gulfstream Park, just for eight races. Terry will be back on Thursday. So tomorrow I'm really going to need your help. So everybody go home, get your Brisnet sheets out or your DRF, however it is you do your handicapping. Make all your Gulfstream Park picks and prepare to be a co-pilot with me tomorrow as we fly the ship through South Florida again on Friday. Uh, 22 and 22 to one Tom and myself, we're going to get ready for a huge day of racing in the Dubai, Dubai world cup. So you're going to want to make sure you tune in for that. Tom and I have been on fire overseas lately for foreign Fridays. Again, free picks today. Will Rogers. There's a link down in the description below. Kindly click on that. And I think that's about it as they try to find their way to the gates for race. Number three, again, you can get some free, not free, get some horse racing today gear over at horse racing today.net. In the menu bar, click on HRT gear. Uh, it's really not a whole lot more I can waste time on before race number three gets started, Terry. So why don't you uh, share your final thoughts of the day with us before we go on? All right. Well, I'd like to thank all the people that come and join us every day uh, and make comments and picks. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully that everybody will go ahead and subscribe who hasn't already done it to YouTube and uh, click that little bell to get notified about all our shows. Go down and copy the link and send to your friends and relatives and everything so that they can also enjoy this and then go to our social sites uh, such as facebook TikTok, instagram uh threads x at horse race the number two day give us a likes and a thumbs up that helps us out quite a bit and it helps you out too because we can continue to do this so right now the one horse is a one-to-one -one favorite moon at night maybe a little overvalued in there terry the five horse is your second choice that one is two to one right on our number the seven horse is your third choice it's seven to two has anybody really got some big value in here it doesn't really look like it so the one that's closest to the odds is the five horse molly malone the gringo horse the gringo five come on 
race masters. Let's get a green go five to the winner's circle. Finally, after it disappointed us so many times yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's see. They're all lined up. The camera has zoomed out. They're just about ready to go. Just waiting on the eight horse, I think, to make its way into the gates. It has done so. Starter's assistant is going to pull up alongside there, get the horse's head straightened out, ready to go. And then race number, it's just race number three, will be on its way. And still, eight races to go. Well, they're off and running. So, uh, well, if you back the six horse, your day is over. You got off to a horrible start. The one horse, too, got off to a pretty bad start. So those race, those horses could struggle a bit. Right now, it looks like the four horse, La Bella Bor Beta, got the lead, Terry, at 25 to 1. Wow. The one we said had a 50% chance essentially to get to the lead. The three horse also up in that mix. The five horse, the green go horse with a chance to come through for us. The one horse has kind of got itself trying to save some ground to get to the rail. That six horse with that awful start has found its way into the mix. The five and the eight horse are coming right now. Uh, I, I don't know which one I'd rather be backing right now because they're both standing up, although the five horse is making the move right now. Jockey seems to think, yeah, the eight horse just never really came on. Here comes the seven horse, which is the crazy. What in the hell kind of move was that, Terry? Did you see that? No, because I'm behind you. So. And then the one horse rallied inside the five horse, so it looks like the seven horse, five to two, going to run away with this one, Terry, although the one horse is going to try to get into the mix. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, the There's one got had to pull up a little bit, had to check there. Yeah, the six horse is finding its way into third, so it's going to go the horse with a really bad break. is going to maybe finish third. I don't know. The three horse is going to try to run it down, but that seven horse just said, see you later, alligators. Seven, one, six, three. Wow, seven, yeah. one, six, and three. The five horse just, I don't know what happened to that one at all. Just pulled up, maybe, maybe injured in the race. I don't know. Maybe the jockey heard something. But the, from now on, any number five that's a green goal, I'm passing on them horses. Let's see. Our, uh, of course, I went one five. It's the next horse in my picks. It always happens to me. Drives me absolutely bananas. Terry still alive in his pick four. I am not. No matter what you're doing for the rest of this day, folks, we certainly hope that like the seven horse and uh, all of your picks, they end up in one place, Mr. Terry. Most top buyers are results getting their own way. The horse will regress simply because it won't get its own way today. That's that five horse. Race three, win place to four, one, and seven. Seven horse coming home, the leader. No matter what you're doing for the rest of this day, we certainly hope you have God's grace, God's favor, and every single thing you do ends up in the winner's circle. Indeed. I'll see you tomorrow. Fine soul. Until then, have a fantastic, terrific Terry Tuesday. <laughs>